Back on the Malsberg Show, I am, as I mentioned earlier, Rick Unger, filling in for Steve with my partner, Dr. Betsy McCoy. Betsy, of course, is a senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research, chairman of the Committee to Reduce Infectious Deaths, and the former lieutenant governor of the great state of New York. Welcome, Good to Betsy. Be with you. And if you're used to watching me at six o'clock on the Daily Wrap, please don't adjust your clock. Uh, it is not six o'clock. I'm just doing a little fill in duty for Steve while he is away enjoying the holiday weekend. Betsy, we get a chance to uh, chat just a bit now about things going on or today. Rumble, or as Rumble, as we sometimes well, do. Well, you wore your rumbling dress, so I'm, I am a little bit nervous, I admit. So I want to start off with this morning's breaking story, which is the jobs report. Yeah. Not all that good. 128,000, I believe. Is that what well, it is? Well, the really bad part of it jobs. is that it's the lowest job participation rate in 37 well, yeah, let's, years. Let's separate that a little bit. That's that's right. In addition to the lower number of monthly additions, right. we are seeing the, the, the lowest job participation rate. What that really means is that many people aren't counted as unemployed anymore right. because they've stopped looking. And actually, when I look at those numbers, what's so distressing is to see how many young people right. who should be climbing up the ladder are not looking or they have part-time jobs, they're definitely underemployed. It's interesting. You know, I've been watching for the past couple of years when the jobs numbers have not been very good uh, to see how much of that you can explain by the baby boomer generation now reaching retirement. You've got this, this large bunch of older people than we've, we've ever had before. And it was interesting that the Bureau of Labor Statistics in this report did put that in it for the first time. Right. It I'll does you, not explain it all. Reason. It does not explain it all. It's Obama not just about care older people. is largely to blame for this, yeah, too, and I'll tell that? you why. Because employers, looking at the requirement that if they have full-time workers, 50 or more full-time workers, have to provide this government-mandated right. insurance, they're pushing people down to part-time status, they're avoiding that 50-person cutoff, and it has had a very negative impact on hiring. In fact, in last year, for the first seven months, uh, the overwhelming number of jobs created were part-time, and we don't want to move to a part-time well, nation. I, I know that that's what was anticipated. I'm going to quibble just a bit because there's a study out in the last week, I think, from Kaiser Family Institute. I don't know how you feel about them. I do view them as nonpartisan, uh, who are saying that it's not turning out to be as bad as was expected. Uh, they're polling the companies, and they're saying that they really aren't. Well, Letting there's a difference between not, not as bad as expected and right. good. The fact is Obamacare is having a negative impact on hiring. All right. Let's switch to Iran. I know this is a favorite topic of yours. Of course, yesterday, President <laughs> Obama in the Rose Garden announced what he called an historic agreement with the Iranians to uh, hopefully impede their ability to build a nuclear bomb. Your take, like I don't know what's coming. And look what's happening today, Rick. I know. Israel, of course, is very disturbed by this. That, they, right. they look at it as ultimate destruction. But France, one of the partners in this negotiation, is backing off. The Iranians are claiming that the White House is lying about what's well, in let's, this potential let's actually, agreement. Let's dig into that a bit, because that is interesting. <laughs> That's a bad sign the, uh, when your bargaining partner is saying, I didn't say that, I didn't mean that. You, you, I know you, you didn't miss it, but you couldn't help but notice that in this four-page document that we're being exposed to, from which sums Department. up from the State Department, right. which sums up the deal. Nobody signed it. There's no signatures on it. There's no signature it's from talking points. Yeah. Remember what that means, like Benghazi talking points. So when you don't have a signed document, it makes right. it very easy. And I kind of understand what's happening in Iran. You've got the negotiator now having to go back and sell it to the hardliners in his country. Well, you, and you've heard the Iranian negotiators say to their country. This agreement doesn't prevent us from doing anything. Yes, you have. We can keep open all our nuclear facilities. I think we heard the uh, Supreme right. Leader say that. Exactly. So it puts this whole thing in a really difficult position. We don't even know, I mean, depending on who you want to believe, we don't know if this is the framework agreement, if this isn't the framework agreement. And let's agreement. remind everybody and by that the way, if we don't know, what you can be pretty darn sure that uh, opposition in Congress is right. going to be pretty loud about it. And just this. remember that during this period, as the negotiations are dragged out longer and longer and longer, during this whole time, Iran is relieved from those sanctions. Th those sanctions were well, lifted. Well, my, my understanding is, if, if it's correct, that they will be relieved from the sanctions, but it will be... They already got some they're relief. They're going to be phased out based on compliance with the... Right, but they got some sanction relief. It. 
just to come to the bargaining table, right, right. and that provides money for them to wage their terrorist activities in other and, countries. And probably for their economy, too. I mean, this is where they're really suffering, is their economy is being impacted. We're going to talk about this a lot today. You We've can invited, tell we agree on everything. On everything. <laughs> We've invited a lot of guests to, uh, to give us their opinion on the... Uh, the situation in Iran. So you're going to be learning a lot. Coming up next, though, we have the resident scholar of the American Enterprise Institute, Michael Rubin, who certainly will have some things to say about the Iran agreement and no doubt many other events of the day. Stay with us.